this is just been exactly what this bike is designed for. My name's Guy Kestivan, and today we're heading out on a big day with Dickon from Santa Cruz on Santa Cruz's Shimano powered 150mm travel Heckler e bike. Big bag, double battery, grand day out. Right, so Heckler, let's not beat around the bush. Shimano Steps E8000 motor is an old motor, three, nearly four years old now, and 27.5 wheels. Now, very few new bikes being introduced as 27.5s. They're either mullet or they're full 29er now. But there are very, very valid reasons why Santa Cruz have chosen both those options. For a start, Shimano motor, yeah, it's a little down on power. It's not the quietest. The app is functional rather than fantastic. It gets a bit grumpy if you try and touch the pedals when you're trying to set it off. But it's super reliable. You're dealing with a massive global network of dealers and you know, Shimano service centers. And that is crucial with an e-bike. And from an on-bike experience, it's really, really good. The display is simple, but really clear and easy to read. The up-down controller, totally intuitive, easy to use. Come on in. 27.5 wheels. Mean that it's agile, it's maneuverable, it's responsive, you know. It gets around all the issues that you normally associate with a chunky e-bike, you know, that they're a bit ponderous, they're a bit wonky handling. This just feels totally natural. And also, if you look at the video stats of my site, twice as many people have watched Bronson videos as they have watched Hightower videos, which is the, uh, the 29er equivalent. And that's backed up by sales figures from Santa Cruz. We say the Bronson, still their most popular bike. People still love a 27.5 inch wheeled trail bike. So, an hour in, done the uh, really nice, picture a single track across the tops, white off bank, and obviously kind of white off bank, so it's amazing, even just in eco, I mean, there's more than enough power to just tap it along pretty much on that 24 kilometer an hour limit, and then this is where the fun starts, yes, this is where that 150 mil travel at the back, 160 mil at the front really starts to earn its stripes and it is such an exceptionally good suspension system now is VPP especially with the scrum to unsprung weight whoa <laughs> oh, glad I had the 27.5 on the back there properly stepped it out in relatively short chain stays as well 445 reach on the large is 465 so it's not mega long but glad I had that 200 mil code to step the back end out there <laughs> it's the only problem with these things they carry a lot of speed because even when you're off the motor like I am now it's super easy to hustle because there's no drag I mean, it's, whoa, hello. Woo. <laughs> It's that agility to hit those lines there. Just sneak through those big old dirty puddles. It's a proper, lively, agile trail bike that just happens when you hit a bit of a slope like this to just nurse you over the top really smoothly and nicely. But, yeah. Where was I? There you go. Just such a consistent system they've tuned it specifically for this bike so because you know you're getting pedal assist it doesn't have to be quite so pedal quite positive which means the small bump is even better so the grip is amazing then you got 5.5 degree head angle, so Woo! <laughs> plenty of stability up front, but damn, this thing is hauling! Woohoohoo! Ah, oh, yes! Ah, oh, I haven't done this 
just the shots to go, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, thank God for the cones. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yes. We're currently in Silton Forest, about 25k in, trying to find the old Silton Downhill course, which apparently does still exist. It's still on trail forks and it's a legit descent. So, here we go. I reckon this is it. Well, I hope this is it. Kind of looks promising. We shall see. Oh, look at that. Pump, 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 pump. That's the other thing, it's really fun. It's kind of really nice just to pump and then obviously when you stick the power on, you've got that extra bit of kick when you need it, but I'm gonna take this. Whoa, yes. <laughs> Relatively steady, because obviously I've never done this before. And as it's actually listed as a downhill course, there's potentially some quite tasty stuff on it. But oh, this is a mint little section. And again, just that medium wheel size really giving me kind of responsiveness to chuck the bike in, keep it tight. I guess we go across here. Yep. But it's still a lot of roots. God, this thing just melts. Chunks like that. Straight like that. Yes, oh, that would have been a belt of a burn. I don't know about it. Yeah, someone's been building in here. Whoa. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'd never have bothered to come and try and find this. It's off the beaten trail. It could have been a real disappointment that burnt a load of height and a load of effort. But because you've got that kind of license to play, thanks to the battery and motor, absolute happy days. Woo! Ha ha! It's probably about 35. 40k in and I think Dick may have got the uh, better line here. <laughs> oh, this is where it gets fun. I'm gonna be doing a cover shoot up here. We're in VR. Well, back in the... Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely had some uh, rock wash out down to the ford. <laughs> I mean... This is doable on a conventional bike, but it's a hell of a lot easier. 70 newton meters of extra torque backing you up. And even in trail, to be honest, boost is so savage on these. It's pretty hard to control, but straight up there. No messing. And like I say, this VPP is set up super supple compared to the rest of the family, so it just tracks the ground so well. And the traction is so good. <laughs> I was waiting for Duke to have the uh, revelation moment about where we were. We normally have to drive about an hour to uh, get to this point from home. And instead we've driven about half an hour and ridden a couple of hours on prime trail as well. Oh, it's just so much good single track on this ride. And it's so easy to put it together. Yeah, it's quite funny. Writing a book with Gary Fisher at the moment. And, and he said, you know, repack, obviously, big deal. It's a downhill that kind of got the attention. But what really sold mountain biking to most people is just going out into the middle of nowhere and coming back with this massive grin on their face. Getting to places that there's no way they could have got to on foot or on horseback. And, you know, you weren't allowed with a petrol engine and kind of e-bikes are just opening up that whole experience again you know whether it's relatively fit people like us linking up all our favorite new school and old school descents or whether it's people who just haven't got a background in the sport or background fitness being able to keep up with those who have or just going out and exploring themselves that's that's the beauty real beauty of these bikes especially when 
the package is such an awesome suspension and handling setup and this is a section where I'm definitely going to be glad of the fact we've got really sorted suspension on here you can hear the uh, fender bang of that but that 160 mil travel box performance elite fork so it's not factory so it hasn't got the gold legs but performance elite means it's got high and low speed compression and rebound damping so you can set it up very accurately oh. Oh, thank you very much <laughs> thank you thanks very much <laughs> and all those those code RSC brakes are a real bonus in terms of uh, giving you stopping control when you need it as well I think I've just had a moment where I'm glad that's the downhill reserve on the back it's a standard reserve carbon rim on the front but reserve <laughs> carbon on the rear and the downhill weave so I mean they're both lifetime warranty both super tough rims but that's the extra tough version on the back end just to give you that bit more peace of mind and as we top out here on the old car and downhill track right up on the moors there's no escaping the fact that this is topping out on price as well this is the most expensive bike i've ever tested for the channel but you do get some proper perks for that for a start you get this super light super tight cc carbon frame which is lifetime warranty on this rsv reserve spec you get lifetime warranty reserve carbon wheels and the frame is super practical as well here you get lifetime warranty pivot bearings which are all fully user serviceable you get grease injection port on the linkage you get really neat cable runs all tucked in neatly there's nothing hanging out the bottom to get snagged there's no need to clean it down after every run because the battery's protected with its own flash plate so you get super neat Santa Cruz carbon headless specific bars with little ports in so cables are all tucked away super neat you get ICG mount you get a chain guard fitted as standard so yes there are bikes that potentially offer more progressive geometry Woo! bigger batteries more power this is just a brilliant balance of handling suspension genuine practicality and yeah it's a premium price but I mean as Dickon is showing right now this just absolutely hauls and then the great thing about having a bit of power assist is pretty much every trail especially kind of flowing contouring ones like this turns into basically a downhill in terms of the speed you're hitting them and in terms of the battery just gone on to red after hauling up a big climb even an eco so yeah pretty much maxed out in terms of range now done about 50k it's definitely been quality 50k and it means we can uh, swap in those extra batteries we bought and hopefully you know because the battery's empty it'll be lighter which will be a real relief and here we are again yet another awesome North York Moors descent still haven't switched the battery out it's been running red for a while but seems happy at that so let's just see how far we can get before we lose power probably not going to need it down here anyway yes you know it's not quite as super smooth and stable as it would be with a 29er I like to keep coming back to it's just got that ability to make those last minute line choices and saves on uh, more free range stuff like this <laughs> this old riverbed trail and that fork you might not have the gold legs it's feeling fantastic which is impressive because the back end 
just drives it so hard. That super deluxe on the back. Feels so good. And they are an awesome shot. And you do tend to find them on bikes. Expect by people who really know what they're doing. And that's certainly the case here. You know, all Santa Cruz is kind of extra rowdy bikes. Get the Super Deluxe the standard now. So this new 5010 high tower, and of course the big travel stuff like Nomad, Mega Tower, where you'd expect it, but you know, it's so easy to forget this is only actually 150 at the rear because it's carrying that speed. Watch out, sheep. So well, head on for my Strava. Come on, girls. Oh, which line are we going to take? Come on, off the side. Mush, mush, mush. Oh, I hate chasing sheep. Their legs look so spindly. Come on, I'm just going to let them go. Let them go. 53k in. Uh, time for a bit of a energy food break. Still in the original batteries as well, but yours is deep red now, right? Just gone red, so um, we're about to put number two in. Happy days. So, pie's in, new batteries in. Fresh as a daisy, hopefully. Mainly had it in eco, most of the way back so far. Just to be sure, but just stuck it into trail. Super tech for this line. Ah, oh, that's so good. This is another bridal way descent. Now, I don't think I've ever actually done before, because to be honest, the top doesn't look that promising. Hey. <laughs> oh, this is good though. Proper old school. Nobody... Oh! oh. <laughs> Trouble is with wearing a big pack is sometimes you uh, catch it on a tree. <laughs> I've said it before, we'll say it again. That's the only problem I'm having with this bike, it's so bloody smooth. You don't realise quite how fast you're going on stuff until it's sometimes a bit late. But, yeah, slapping that tree, it's slapping it sideways. So, 88 kilometres deep now, and, uh, and we could have just turned right, gone down the hill and been back at the van, but let's finish in style. Here we go. One last roll of the dice, and what has been a super amusing game of favourite descent and super long cross-country cruises. I know, this has just been exactly what this bike is designed for. Going out there, having maximum fun. Pushing your boundaries of what and where you can ride well beyond what you could on a normally aspirated bike with this kind of capability. But it's still keeping all that mobility, agility, control, and just, just fun, basically, and capability of the, you know, Bronson and the other classic Santa Cruz trail bikes. That precision, that totally sorted handling, not too crazy, but certainly progressive enough to really let you ride and properly enjoy the top you know downhill enduro trails when you hit them and all those usual you know super practical super tough lifetime warranty Santa Cruz benefits reserved wheels sorted spec and with a motor that you know might be showing its age a bit in terms of the app, in terms of the power, it's got this mid sized battery, but in terms of practicality and just tested reliability, it's very hard to fault Shimano. And the whole package just does exactly what you'd want it to be. It's absolutely a Santa Cruz, just more range, more speed and more chances of having 
a brilliant time because you can just either just take it out and explore new stuff like we have done today or just session your favourite stuff just such a great ride we've had today so good and still ripping even after all this distance on one of the hottest days of the year yes Edna <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> Boom. Oh. That was a good way to end the ride. That was a very good way <laughs> to spend a day. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah. Whew. And you know, you don't have to tick off many rides like that to really start to see a payback on investing in a proper quality bike like this. What an absolute riot. <laughs> ha! So Dickens had the stats running. 91. 91k. 13. 13k left, because we spanked it a bit towards the end. Four hours, 42. That's What's the average on that then? Average 19.4 kilometers an hour. That ain't bad for a 160 mil travel enduro bike on the hottest day of the year. That'll do. That will do. <laughs> so, uh, massive thanks to uh, Dickin for uh, coming out on the ride and for lending me the Heckler. I've been riding it for a couple of months now, so uh, there's going to be a tech talk round as well, going into a lot more of the detail uh, when it's static and when you can obviously see it up close. Uh, I'll do that when I've not just put 90k into myself and I'm actually concentrating a bit better. But thanks massively for my Patreon supporters who support the channel with a small monthly donation and in return they get extended... Uh, sort of behind the scenes and early release clips uh, as a bit of payback. Uh, thanks to you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, click for notifications as well. And uh, yeah, thanks to, sorry, thanks to Sweet Protection. Thanks to Riders Eyewear. Thanks to Gyro, Camelback, Ergon for the pack. Even though it did put me off uh, when I clipped that tree with it. Can't really blame the pack for that. Uh, yeah, sorry, Sweet Protection. These knee pads, I have loved these fresh on today. These have been astonishing and they've been tested a couple of times as well. Can't quit socks and ride concepts for the shoes. Well, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV talking about Santa Cruz Heckler X01 reserve spec. Proper, proper day out weapon. <laughs>